Truth is, if you wanna rank up, there are really only two things you need to know. Step one, do the basics. And step two, repeat step one more, better, and consistently. If I had to break everything I've learned down into just the essentials, there are really only four, maybe five things you need to understand to get top 1%. These are the only must-know principles to get GC. Also, I get tons of questions asking, Luke, if you're so smart, why are you still GC3? Why don't you have SSL yourself? And my answer to that is number one, these videos take a long time to make. And number two, if I'm not making videos here, I'm probably making more videos for my coaching program. If you're new here, I run Rocket League's number one live coaching program. It's called the Grand Champ Roadmap, where we take gold through champ ranked players, looking at you plats, up to Grand Champ in just six weeks or less. At the time I'm recording this, we just crossed 2,400 players inside the program, and we're actually running a first week free sale for 10 people that wanna sort of test out the program. So if that's you and you want one of those 10 codes, DM me on Discord with the keyword free, and we talk details within the next seven days. My Discord will be first linked down below. Otherwise, let's cover the principles. Principle number one, vision. From what I've seen, 90% of bad decisions in Rocket League stem from one thing, and that's bad vision. Vision or field of view refers to anything that you can sort of see on your screen at any given point in time. The problem is though, in Rocket League, vision is very different than other video games. You see, in a shooter game like CS or Valorant, if two players are standing side by side and facing roughly the same direction, they'll have the exact same vision. However, in Rocket League, two players can be sitting facing the exact same direction, but be viewing completely different parts of the field. This could be due to any variety of things, whether it's with ball cam, car cam, moving your camera, camera pitch, or even just settings. Point is, because of the way camera movement works in Rocket League, vision is incredibly important. At the end of the day, the more vision you have of the play, the more information you'll be able to receive, and on average, the better decisions you'll make. Of course, you can make good decisions with low vision and bad decisions with good vision, but on average, better vision will lead to better decisions. So then the question becomes, how do you improve your vision? And there are really two quick fixes that I can give you right now to instantly improve your vision and your decision-making. Number one, expand your vision. A super common bad habit at the low ranks is playing too close to the play. And the thing you have to understand is the closer you are to the ball, the less vision of the field you'll have and the worst decisions you'll make. You probably know this intuitively because for example, if you've ever been in a situation where the ball flies directly up above your head and you have ball cam on, you'll know your vision instantly goes straight up into the sky. And for all intents and purposes, that's basically zero. When you get in these situations and the ball's over your head, it's almost impossible to make good decisions because all you can see is the ball. This inevitably leads to committing and going for challenges that are bad, not being able to see the opponents and completely rushing or panicking, or just overall getting really poor touches, even if you can make contact with the ball. This is why it's super important to instead, especially if you're below GC, always maintain distance from the play. If you've ever heard the advice of rotate wide or stay back, this is why. Because whenever your vision goes down, if you just make it a habit of rotating back around to your side of the field and effectively resetting your vision so you can see everything ahead of you, you're gonna make so many less panicked decisions and overall the game will just become so much less awkward and so much easier to play. Second mistake that a ton of low ranked players make and this gets into the more intermediate ranks with diamonds and champs and it's tunnel vision. The mistake of tunnel vision has less to do with the fact that you can't get all the information you need. Usually tunnel vision happens when you can see everything on screen, but instead you're focusing your vision on the wrong part of the field. For example, if you've ever been waiting for a center as second man, you know, from one of your teammates who's, you know, centering the ball in the opponent's corner, you may have been baited into challenging because you were only tunnel visioned on the ball. In these situations, it can be super easy to overlook 
any defenders that are positioned back post or have a way quicker time to the ball than you do. So instead, you need to learn how to expand and quick check other parts of your vision. This will of course come with time, but if I were to give you a quick checklist of what good players usually check to make sure they're not tunnel visioning, it goes number one, check the ball. Number two, check your opponents. Number three, check your teammates to see if you have time. And then only finally, number four, check back to the ball and see if you can still go. If you can improve these two aspects of your vision and you literally don't even pay attention to any of the next three principles, you will already make better decisions than 80% of the players below GC. Number two, the second principle you need to understand is radius of coverage. Just like with vision, many beginner or intermediate Rocket League players position wrong because they don't understand that momentum is completely different in Rocket League than in other games. You see, in a game like CSGO, your radius of coverage, or in other words, anything you can shoot or cover, is basically a perfect circle around you based on the distance of, you know, whatever gun you're using at any given time. However, in Rocket League, the shape of your radius of coverage is not circular at all. In fact, it's much more like a weird seashell shape around your car. This is because it's much easier in Rocket League to reach a ball out in front of you, you know, due to momentum and due to boost, than it is to reach a ball even a little bit to the side of you or a little bit behind you. The problem is most low rank players don't take this into account with their positioning, and it leads to chronically pushing up too far into plays. This could be, for example, pushing up into your corner on defense. It could be pushing up past your back post when you're playing goalie, or it could even be pushing up too far on offense when you're waiting for that center to come, like we were talking about in the earlier example. You've got to understand, once you push up just a little bit, you will very quickly reach the point of no return, where any shot you go for or any ball coming your way may just completely fly over your head. This is why the concepts of back post, corners, and the 70-30 rule, which I explain in more detail in a lot of my other tutorials, I'll have those linked on screen here, are so important. But bottom line, you should be positioning further away from the ball in most situations. Principle number three, timing your rotation. Once people understand back post and radius of coverage, a lot of them think they have it figured out. The problem, however, is timing. You see, going back to our CSGO example, in a game like that, movement speed and momentum doesn't really matter. As long as you're in the right position and you're holding that position, that's the main thing you have to think about in those FPS games. In Rocket League, however, not only do you need to be in the right position, but you need to be there at the right time. Because of the way momentum works in Rocket League, you could be positioned back post, but if you're starting from a complete standstill and a shot comes on net, you might still not be able to reach it. This is where the idea of timing your rotation comes in. As you climb higher and higher in the rakes, you need to be conscious, not just that you're, for example, rotating back post, but that you're arriving back post around the time that the opponent is approaching it with the ball. This way, rather than having to get to the back post and then completely kill your momentum and just sit there, you can pick up boost and sort of weave along your rotation back to meet the play as it comes. The more you can time your rotation and sort of time your re-entry into the play, the smoother your play is going to be and the quicker you're going to be able to transition from, say, save to clear to breakaway back on the opposing team. This, of course, comes with time, but step one is just being aware of the timing of your rotation, whether you're somebody who more often rushes to positions, or maybe you're the type of player who's just usually late to the party. Whatever it may be, you need to identify the timing of your rotations, and once you do, you're going to be able to play so much faster in your ranked games. Finally, the last principle that I see violated all the way up through SSL is something called moments of action versus moments of inaction. When most low rank players are deciding when to go for boost or not, it's sort of just based on when they feel like it. But good players only decide to go for boost when they actually have time to. Let me explain. At any given point in your Rocket League game, one of two things is happening. Either there's a moment of action or a moment of inaction. 
A moment of action is any time in the play where the ball could very quickly be redirected, or let's just say the path or the next step of the ball is uncertain. A moment of inaction, on the other hand, is any point in time where you know where the ball will be going for, let's say, the next three to five seconds. The mistake a lot of players will make is deciding to go for boost or rotate back or just go make a play during a moment of action. If it's a moment of action and you're uncertain where the ball's gonna go next, you need to have ball cam on and keep your eyes on the play. Then if and only if you can predict where the ball's gonna be going, let's say it's rolling back into your corner or rolling across the field and you know nothing's gonna happen for the next couple seconds, that is the only point where it's safe to go for boost and rotate back. If you can just keep ball cam on during these moments of action, you're going to be able to jump on so many more opportunities and bail your team out of so many dicey situations where otherwise most players would just completely be shut off and not paying attention. There are more and more levels to this concept of moments of action with, for example, the fact that you shouldn't be flipping during a moment of action. You know, you should never commit before a moment of action. But at base level, make sure you keep your eyes on the play during moments of action and do not turn off ball cam to go for boost because this is what leads to the classic boost over ball where you're picking up your corner boost as the ball rolls slowly into your net. Okay, those are my four key principles, but one bonus that I feel like I have to include for some of the higher ranked players is something called off the ball play. So all of these principles that I've covered up until this point have mostly been about how you can play the ball better and how you can decide, you know, when to challenge or where to position and things like that. The way you continue to rank up is not by maximizing what you're doing while you're on the ball, but instead by increasing your impact off the ball. For example, many low ranked players will just get in the habit of immediately after their play rotating straight back. While yes, it's good to to make your play and get out. The problem is if you're just moving in straight lines up and down the field, one, you may collide with your own team who's trying to challenge the ball, obviously not good. But number two, you won't be making any impact while you're rotating back. Like for example, going for demos or stealing boost. If instead you make it a habit of every time you finish your play to rotate off the ball weak side across the field, you can then look for opportunities to demo sitting ducks on the opposing team, steal boost, or otherwise disrupt the play and clear way for your team. This goes on both offense and defense, but bottom line is, if you're somebody who just rotates up and down the field in straight lines and just relies on the big boost, you need to learn how to rotate across the field and take advantage of small pads and stealing boost and looking for demos, because this is really the only way you're gonna be able to survive in high ranked lobbies. If you want more on the mechanic side of improvement, I'll have one of my mechanics guides that's gotten really good feedback linked here. And if you need more explanation on these principles or you just want more examples of how they work in game, you can check out my other video here called the only video you need to rank up. Thanks so much for watching and I'll catch you there.